So we've just come out the match. It's a very, very long trip up to uh, up to Newcastle on a Friday night. Thank you very much, the TV companies, for, for that. We're all very grateful for that, aren't we? Yeah. But we've managed to get here. Loads of Wolves fans have made the effort up tonight to get to uh, St James's Park. We're just going to start with just a quick one word from each of you to describe how you're feeling and the performance after us. Chris? Very poor. Very poor. Underwhelming. Underwhelming. Flat. Disjointed. How's that? Really? Disjointed. Okay, so the story of the game is obviously we've seen the lineup at the start and um, then Donker's out with illness, Neves is out injured, Ralwino is suspended, Daniel Pedance has got a bad foot. So straight away you're looking at the team, Kundal's come in, it's a two-man midfield, and you're thinking, mm, Pedance up front, Wang's come in, and you're thinking, okay, I'm straight away I'm concerned before the game. Kundal's a young lad, he did well at Tottenham, but well, that was in a three. Um, but Paul, you know, how are you going to sum that up really? I mean, your thoughts? The first half is what killed us, I think. Um, going in at half time, we haven't even had one touch in the opposition box. And I think playing against a team who's just had five put past them and we want to get into the top six, it's a real chance to show them that we mean business and put pressure on the teams that are playing tomorrow. And I don't know why we weren't a bit more front foot and trying to get that Did first Did you think goal. it was a little bit side, side, back, side, yeah. side, back, a bit like, yeah. Tactic, tactics, that Because you're not happy, are you, Chris? That was definitely Chris, tactical. just say it how it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, as Paul said, they've just got five put past them and they've Come out, we've, we've already crossed the halfway line, haven't we, in the first half? What, why? Don't we just be a bit more offensive? We didn't. Do you think it was because Kundal, who's came in, he's a young lad, and we don't want to be critical of Kundal because he's going to have a great future. Matinho's in there. Dendonka against Villa, let Matinho do his magic. Neves does the same. Kundal's a young lad and didn't want to make any mistakes, and that was why he yeah. hasn't quite got the experience. I mean, I think, what do you think? I there? think everyone was negative. That was the problem. I think it wasn't just Kundal. I mean, it's a big ask to be. Yeah, you know, big ask two, for him. To be in a young two, lad. It's a big ask, but everyone was negative. The balls were going backwards. There was no real sort of energy going forward. It was just. It felt so flat that first half. But again, we were saying at half time. You know, you. Um, do you understand that a little bit? If they come out second half and really give it a go, yeah. it, it just feels like a massive opportunity to me to, like Paul said, put pressure on the top on those. Bit top like teams. Everton away, we did the same at Everton, didn't we? We thought we were poor first half, and then we were a lot better second half. Apparently, that was the game plan. The second half, we kept we did, we bossed the match and won one 0 yeah. I've heard a lot of people say, Paul, that it was the poorest attacking half of football yeah. that we've seen, and we've had some poor attacking halves in November and December this year that they've seen Wolves play this year, in the first half especially? Yeah, I could disagree uh, with that. I think literally there was one cross in the box that didn't find its target and a, one long range shot. I dread to think what the XG would have been if, you, <laughs> if you're into stats like that. But it can't be down to the personnel. For me, it's down to the instructions that they're playing to. And if you consider our record about not conceding away from home in first halves, it's a clear plan there. Um, and great, we managed to get to uh, half time at 0 0. So now, right, go for it, let's get the next goal. And I think actually, when they scored, we probably were starting to, to, get in, to yeah, turn the yeah, yeah. a little bit without, without, without threatening the goal. Yeah, without like, massively putting them under pressure. I did think we were starting to show that we did mean business, but not good enough. No, no definitely not good enough. I mean, uh, I mean the, way I, the way I see it, I was concerned before the start of the game. Um, uh, Pedence was a massive miss, probably more than Den Donker, because yeah. Pedence has got that. When, he, uh, when he's on the pitch, our goal ratio is so much higher. And the front three played as though they'd, they'd only just met each other today. I, I cannot fault, I don't know about you, Fabio Silva. Yeah, he I thought he did him. everything in the last minute. He tried, he got shot away in the second half out of nothing, which the keeper did well to save. Wang in the first half was AWOL missing in action. I didn't even know he was on the pitch. Again. Trincao was the Trincao that we'd seen previously, kept giving the ball away. Was that because Pedence wasn't on the pitch and they link up well? Yeah, why not make that change earlier? You know, everyone could see why the Trincao was struggling. That change could have made a good 15 minutes earlier, really got the point, but just never felt too little, too late, really. Well, I mean, Chris, do you think that the changes should have came early? Because to me, Neto should have been on at least 60 minutes, yeah. not the 75th minutes. Definitely. We were saying that from 
from about 55 minutes. You can see, you know, the failure was the same as the first half. Wang wasn't getting positions. You know, I don't know what's wrong with him. He can't seem to turn on the ball, can he? No, he's a, he's a different type of player to Pedance and Trinko. They've got the trips. Wang's a little bit more direct. And he, you know... But he's direct that way. He's doing yeah. that way. And there was so much passing back side side. And we never got a grip of the midfield. And we never got on top. Maybe it would have been better if we'd have had a three-man midfield. I know we have got a midfield, but Saiz could have potentially come in. And that would have given Martino and... Luke Kundal a little bit more cover. Uh, Paul, man of the match for you. Come on, you've got to pull one out and you've been forward rated. It's not easy to pull one out um, just because no one really stood out. But I think I'd probably say that if anyone was going to get the goal for us, it was going to be Silver. I think he led the line well, he showed well um, in difficult conditions and we're looking up to score down at the keeper's bottom right in the second half. So he'd been the man of the match and we'd have to give the performance rating five. Maybe that's even been generous and at half-time it wouldn't have been that high, but five overall. Five, Andy? I think Silver as well, definitely around the match, can't argue with that. He fed off scraps and I thought he did you know, well with what he had to work with. Um, definitely a five overall, just so, so disappointing. Five. And Chris? Yeah, I'm going to go Fabio as well, but I'm going to go four. A four. So I'm going to no, go... attacking threes. I'm going to go with a... a I'm going to concur with Paul, and we talked about this with the producer, a five. I don't think he can give it more than a five. No. I thought Kilman had a decent game with the maximum amount. He made a couple of mistakes, but he's, some of his tackles were good. But I'm going to go with Fabio Silva again, because I thought he was, he did everything that he could with what he had, with the support that he had around him. And I've got one more final question, and guys, we want to get your opinions in the comments. Just say it how it is. But I'm going to go round, the, I'm going to go round all of us now. Europe. Is it still on or is it gone? It's gone. It's gone. Unfortunately, I think it's gone. You think it's gone, Paul? It's still on, but it's a it's a big ask now, and I really uh, think tomorrow if the other teams win, they'll be five points ahead. So with six games to go. I like. Hi guys, we've nearly finished. <laughs> we've got some. Hey, <laughs> um, I think what Paul said. I think basically the good feeling I think for most Wolves fans is that Europe's probably gone. Unless the likes of West Ham and Man United really trip up again the weekend. Because we need them to lose and us to win. And now we're hoping that they will lose again. So it probably has moved away again. Before when we said we've had about 11 games to go. We've got 6 games to go. Liverpool, Chelsea and Man City. But it'd be so Wolves we'll go and win them games. But hey, disappointing tonight. Very much so. Leave your, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And uh, look out for the uh, the match vlog, obviously extra time and the international fan reaction all coming up. We're going to go away now and find somewhere to... Uh, drown our sorrows. Yes, probably drown our sorrows and, uh, and chew on the fat on this one. It's been a disappointing night here for Wolverhampton Wanderers at St James's Park. It's finished Newcastle United 1, Wolverhampton Wanderers 0, but it is a great away day. Yeah. We'll say we'll that. We'll be back next year. We'll, and yeah, we will be back next year because Newcastle will be in the Premier League and next year. Dead and the, yeah, I'll put a little focus. Get him on the camera. Can you go on? Can you go on? Yeah. Get him on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there you go. Fantastic. Always Wolves. Yeah. Always Wolves.